Omoyele Shaweri, convener of Revolution Now protest, has been refused release by the Department of State Services. And the process and industrial development saga continues as the federal government has been ordered to pay a $250,000 to the United Kingdom court before it can appeal the judgment. This is Plus Politics and I am Felicity Ezewike. The Department of State Services, DSS, stated that Omoyele Shawari is still being detained because they have not received a copy of the court order granting him bail from his legal team. In response to this, Mr. Femi Falan San, the lead counsel to Mr. Shawari's legal team, said he personally served the order and a notice of the compliance by his client on the DSS. I wonder who do we believe? Joining me to discuss this are two very leaded gentlemen. I start with Uguchuki Kako, political analyst. Thank you for joining us today. And of course, we have Raymond Nkanebe, legal practitioner. Always a pleasure to have you both you here this. on the program. Yeah. Twice now, it seems, the DSS has refused to allow um, Shawari go. Did you see this coming? Of course, yeah, I saw it coming. There's been precedent already. This is not the first time that uh, under this administration was seen the uh, was seen uh, uh, say different organs of government or you know that that supposed to obey court order you know treat court uh, uh, court pro proclamation in contempt of the court and court say do this this person like we saw that happen. That's exactly we saw that happen with Dasuke. So uh, there has been precedent over the last few years. So it's, it's normal if you're an analyst or somebody that sit back and look at this and say, okay, this is what I expect at this time. It's, uh, for what the DSS is saying, uh, for me, it doesn't make any sense because at the end of the day, uh, the DSS had their lawyer in court, and I'm sure that the, the lawyer would have briefed. Uh, the, uh, the client, this is what the court says. So uh, even if you, even if you feel that you don't want to acknowledge what uh, Femish Fellan has said to you, the court sends someone to deliver that uh, the letter or the memo wherever to them, and they refuse. So uh, it, for me, it's just a pure case of. Uh, contempt of court when court say this is what's supposed to happen let this guy go because the court doesn't have, have a reason to keep him uh, in jail or wherever but uh, this is Nigeria uh, I'm sure Raymond you would expect this question especially mm -hmm. because it was made just a few days ago yes. at the beginning of your new legal year yes. the CJN said that they will no longer tolerate a disobedience to court order from that perspective how do we explain this? Can the court do more to ensure that its orders are followed? Okay, that's a very good question. You see, there's a limit to which the judiciary can go. Um, the, the role of the judiciary is to interpret the laws, right? It's to interpret the laws. And they do that through the judicial process by making pronouncements either for the plaintiff or for the defendant, as the case may be. So it is expected that the orders of court should be complied with by individuals and as well as government. So the judiciary does not have the power, doesn't have control of the police to, uh, to enforce its own orders. orders. It is expected that a civilized government who claims to thrive in a democratic setting where the rule of law is a foundation of governance should obey such court orders. When they don't, it's only like he has pointed out, makes a mockery of the institution of the judiciary and then a mockery of the entire, and the entire democratic process. So I don't think the judiciary has, there's no particular way spelled out in the law where they will go to seek and compliance enforce. with their It's orders. others that are supposed to yeah. do that. Yes. Okay, let's, let's look at the two scenarios now. Yes. Um, Falano and his team say they have uh, delivered, they have completed, complied with the court order. And then DSS, or is it SSS now, saying um, via the spokesperson Afunaya, saying that they have not received the court order. Who do we believe? That's back to the introduction to this program. Well, I, I think uh, I, there's only person I want to believe at this point is famous Falana. All right, he's a senior advocate of Nigeria, and this is someone that we've seen over over a long period of time, over the last, since 1999. This is an individual versus an institution. No, no, it's not, but it's, it's, it's not, it's a lawyer that said that he has done this, he's a lawyer, all right, that swore an oath, uh, you know, to defend the constitution and to do things right. So 
I don't think you come out to abuse the same constitution that you swore to, uh, to defend as, as a lawyer, to protect and do what you're supposed to do. So uh, we're in a place where spokesmen, uh, spokespersons in government think that they are the next uh, demigod from Greece or from any part of the world. So it, it's sad because at the end of the day, this is somebody that, this is not the first time that meeting Falana. Falana was one that handled the case of uh, Ezzakzaki, was part of the legal team that handled the case of Ezzakzaki. If this man is saying, this is, he's a son, he's an advocate of Nigeria, I don't believe he's lying. All right? This is not the first time he's going to court. This is not the first time he defended people that have been accused uh, of unlawfully or lawfully. This is, this is not the first time he's doing this thing. So he understands the court processes. He knows how to transmit the letter or whatever the court, uh, the court has said to the right person to take this letter. So he said him Himself, that he did this, all right? So it's difficult for anybody because he, he's, he's, his pedigree, he's, he's standing in society, who he is as a person. It's difficult to, to come and to ask for, for someone to say that Falana didn't do this thing. He's not a novice. He didn't just start practicing yesterday night, right? He has been doing this thing cons uh, consistently for years, and he's a senior advocate of Nigeria. So I think it, it's sad that the DSS is playing. For me, it's a game, all right? And this is a game that, like he said, makes a mockery of our judicial process, make a mockery of, of our democratic process because. Uh, you are not there to do your bidding, be you the DSS spokesperson or be whoever you work, what you think you work for. You are there to, to uphold the constitution and make sure that the integrity of the constitution and, and the integrity of Nigeria security, everything is in order. That is not happening at the moment. Let me, do you want to chip in others? Yeah, I'm going to say something. Okay. I, don't, I don't, I have the highest respect for the distinguished senior advocate Femi Falana. And, um, but I think it will be, um, um, just as I has pointed out, trying to define him as the very paragon of um, what a legal practitioner should be. I believe there have been a lot of misinformation in the media, either misinformation or trying to draw a certain narrative to what is actually amiss. So I don't want us to be too hasty into believing one party and not believing the other party. In, this, in, in such a conundrum, I think the way out is for the bailiff of the court, who was asked to, to deliver that court order, to swear an affidavit, to say, I. So, 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 on so, so they tried to serve, but the service was either refused or I was not allowed entry. He was, he was trying to feed of it and file it before that court. And then, Falana on their part, we have what we call contempt proceedings. That is something close to how the judiciary can seek to seek enforcement of its orders by committing the person who has refused to comply with that order. They, they've already to, to filed prison. their suit, actually. Yes, they filed the the their suit, the content the against con the DSS yes, um, director. It, yes. And they want him to explain or, you know, yes. give a reason why yes, he's holding. Yes, yes. Yeah, we, we call it the, the, the notice of consequence of disobedience court. to court order. So he's meant, no, sorry, he's going to show cause why, um, okay, notice of disobedience to court order, and after two days, he will file what now called consequences of failure to obey court order, following which the person will be committed to prison. So that's the committal proceedings that have been initiated by Falana, and that process is still running. So uh, is that the, the DSS complies with the order if they are, and, or face the consequence of going to prison or Face the, 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 face the music. Uh, should the DSS have issued the statement in the first instance? Because it seemed to be like a speedy reaction to uh, the suits filed by Falano and his team. Sh was that statement necessary? Should they be issuing a statement at this point? You what, mean, should, should, what particular should statement? See? The statement the where statement they said they have where not said they have not received the um, order of the court. Yes. Yeah. Should they be issuing a statement at this time, or we should be seeing Shawari on the streets? Well, I think uh, court orders after proclamation, until they are served the party upon which it is directed to, you are not entitled to comply with that court order. It is upon service. So if they legitimately feel that they have not been served, and they have heard in the media that they were served and have failed to comply, I think it is, it is, it is, it is. No, but the bailiff himself, the punch reports that the bailiff was there at 9.30 in the morning. He and was that's why turned I said back. That, that, that he has not sworn an affidavit. So he must swear an affidavit yeah, in order for it to be valid. We are not going to rely on his words only. And, or, and maybe other uh, misinformation, I, I search with that word in the media. The bailiff knows what to do. You go and swear an affidavit and said, I tried to serve and service was declined. So that because if a court is going to act on the committal proceedings, the court will first of all satisfy its mind that that order, there was an attempt to serve and there was a refusal. If the court does not satisfy its mind to that fact, he cannot make any order committing DSS officials to prison. 
So that's why service of um, the affidavit of non-service or refusal of service is, is, is necessary. And I suppose that the court official should have done that, and that would be the bedrock upon which any action in furtherance of compliance of that order can, can be built. All right, Okutuku, let me, let me ask you this question. Um, the um, AGF is out of the shores of this country uh, as per the PID case that we'll be touching on in the next segment. But for this particular case, he was interviewed in an international platform, the BBC actually, uh, on Focus on Africa. And he was asked the question of why Shore was still being held. He reiterated the position of the presidency that the government feels his actions are treasonable, and as a result, they've taken the necessary action. Does that body language t indicate any sort of willingness to direct, to follow court orders, so to speak, and release Shawere? The, the age is a joke, All right? That's, 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 the, that's the easiest word to say that to say it in a way that is not, uh, is not insulting. It's a joke. All right, because if you call yourself the AG and you understand what the law is, I think you, you, have, you have primary responsibility to interpret the, the, interpret the law, interpret it in, in that sanity of what it's supposed to be. All right, because uh, we've seen, all right, uh, the court has led this guy to, to go home. All right, if, if is he saying that the court, the constitution, doesn't, the, the judges at the, the, uh, at the court don't understand what they're saying? I think for me, that, that sometimes is it, is a difficult thing because sometimes you see, you know, lawyers because they are free to interpret and say whatever they want to say uh, based on the court. Everybody can give it the wrong interpretation and think that it is the right interpretation. But sometimes when that happens, I think it, 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 it defeats the spirit of the Constitution, which is in fairness, in rule of law, and, and the rest of them. Because for me, uh, there's nothing he said that was treasonable, all right? Uh, in the past, we've had the statement of the, what the president said in the past, the current president. All right, some of them are not printed, we can't even say them on television. In the past, Erufai, same thing, same with the same thing. They, so why did not say one tenth of what they said in the past in this country? These things are, the information are there, it's not misinformation. All right, don't, not is it fake news. All right, so it does not make sense. Uh, and it's sad that uh, when you have ages, they think that are there to make the president look good or they're there to, to enable some level of tyranny because it doesn't it doesn't make sense. If you are there, you are there as an AG, the first person that's advising the uh, uh, the president in terms of legal issues and the rest of them. I believe that your you, you sole responsibility is, is to honor what the constitution says and defend the constitution above whatever is the president's interest. So it doesn't make sense that he will leave the shores of Nigeria to go and embarrass us outside in the front of the world, not knowing what to say. It doesn't make sense, and it's a joke. Well, the, the, let, let's move away from that a bit and yes. talk about earlier this week, on, on the day of the ruling, actually, the night before the ruling, on Tuesday, we talked about the situation, and one of the, one of the talking points was the likelihood, the possibility that the Shawari situation might metamorphose into the Dasuki scenario, as it were. Would you say it has started already with the the, the continued detention of Shore. Let me ask you this question first. Before I'll take your I, I, I think I think it has started. You know what, what you say in terms. I'm not a lawyer, all right. I'm a political analyst. So the way I see things is different from the way you see things, all right. So for example, the Dasuki own. I still don't understand why the uh, Bali for whoever is in the court process they didn't find anything in contempt of the court up to this moment. I didn't understand why it didn't happen for uh, uh, Zakzak. It took it took like more than a year for him to. It was it was in prison. Despite the fact that it's a court court order that said this guy should go home. So you see, all these things build up. Right? And when they build up, sometimes they serve as a momentum uh, for the person that who is who, who is the governor or who is the president or who is or who is the AG or whatever, because is a is a president and they work with this president. If at the point that Dasuki was having this issue, yeah, if whether I, 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 as at this point, the, 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 no court of competent jurisdiction have found him guilty of anything. Same thing with uh, same thing with exactly same thing with show right? So if the court said that this person before our very eyes, we don't care what you're saying, but because before, because, before, because of the evidence in front of us, this guy is free. He has not committed any any crime. We're not going to hold him in Suleja prison or in Krikri prison. Let him go. That is how is that is how a democratic country works. That's how a civilian country works, and that's and that's how you respect the rule of law, and the constitution. So I'm not surprised, all right. And I feel as a political analyst that what is happening to uh, show right? is like is is a build up. It's a one more process. If they release him, which I don't see happening very soon, because there is a, there is a president, I want to be released seriously. That is what everybody wants. But because we have so far over the last four years an administration and a, a, go, a, a government that the AG will go abroad to say that what is happening is is, is in order, 
So it serves as a momentum for the people that are praised within that within that place in Asura not to understand what they're supposed to do. So it gives it gives it gives room for a little bit of ty tyranny and, and oppression, which is not supposed to be happening. Let, let me you want to react to that or I should just go ahead and because I was going to ask you actually uh, the human rights record of this um, administration, um, riding on what he said, there's been court order after court order after court order that this government has you know ignored and disobeyed. What, in your opinion, would be a lasting solution that would compel? I, I also put this question to uh, another legal practitioner here yesterday or the day before, asking that is it possible that the court could withhold some of its services as a way for the government, as a way to compel them to follow court order? Because if you keep saying that the court, you know, ha just does its role of issuing the order, there must be other ways because. If it continues like this, where we're heading nowhere. I agree with you perfectly, but um, I think I don't think that should come from the judges. I think it should come from the bar. That is my constituency, and it is in that regard that we have failed. As, uh, as uh, speaking of the Nigerian Bar Association, um, during the military era, we read of how the MBA was becoming a force. Uh, that, 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 that the military administration had to, had to contend with. But we've not seen similar pattern in the body language of the leadership of the bar. They are the ones who should give orders and say, lawyers should boycott all the courts. It should, it should send that message both at home and abroad that uh, people will ask, what is happening? Uh, we are protesting against the attitude of this government to court orders. And we don't think it makes any sense going to court every day and then uh, the, the judgments of court are not complied with. You understand? So I think that that should be a way whereby government will, 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 will be um, intimidated or embarrassed and do what some of the things it ought to be doing. And then also, there's also, we can't always uh, miss the, the need to um, build allow our institutions to function uh, independently of those who are in charge of it. If we could uh, uh, enhance our institutions and make them more, in the, more independent of their managers, I think it will also help in a long way. Uh, there seems to be this fear that Shawari might jump bail as well. Mm -hmm. But the court has his passport. Is that a likelihood? Could that be the reason the government is still holding on to him? There is, there is no reason on God's green earth why they should hold him. There is, it's not their business to interpret what the law says. But do, do you see the possibility there of no Shawari jumping There is no possibility. We have to dead that argument now so that no, it doesn't fly out of this room. There is no <laughs> possibility on God's green earth. The court said, leave this young man. Leave this young man. If the, if the court said they want to seize his passport, they want to keep his passport, it, the court decides. It, it has no business. The government shouldn't because Shawari is a global citizen. He's a, he's a media publisher. Right? He understands the law. He knows what he's supposed to do. So he can't leave this place. Where is he, where is he running to? Right? If the court said they need him, because also if he travels in disobedience to what the court said, that's the contempt of the court. So he's a minus on his side. So I believe he's a smart human being that will not do something like that. So that argument is, is, is null and void. It's just that they're trying to use it. They're trying to use it as, as a base to keep him there, which does not make any sense. Well, I, I don't even think uh, Shawari has any reason to run to anywhere for two reasons. One of it is that he's being represented by a very distinguished member of the bar who we understood the judge told, he told the judge to release Shawari to him in his own honor. And, uh, and the judge acceded, giving his standing at the bar. So I don't think, uh, I, I, I believe um, in the event of Shawari's release, Falana will tell him, okay, you see, I stake my reputation to this. You have to comply with court order. That is one leg of it. On the other leg, they are saying treasonable felony. Treason rests on two, on two things. You are conniving with the enemies of the state and that you are taking overt acts to overthrow the government of the state. I have not seen any of, any of such in what Shaw already did. He only called for Nigerians. He clearly called the concerned Nigerians to go out to the streets and make a statement of the state of affairs in their country. It does not amount to conniving with Boko Haram. It does not amount to taking up arms against the state. So such a charge will be struck out without any, uh, any, any, any scruples. One would expect with the pressure and the quality of lawyers in the team of Shawari that this government will bow to pressure. Are we missing something here? Tyranny doesn't bow to, to pressure easily. 
It's not, it's, it, it, there's no way in history books from the, from the ancient times to this moment that tyranny bows to pressure easily. Uh, like you said, uh, it's a failure that will have a bar. That, 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 there was a time I had the brave bar. I used to be like the brave bar, <laughs> the slogan. There's nothing brave about Nigeria bar. It's sad, all right? Surely is not just the only person. Right, uh, the journalist in New York, uh, Ben, uh, the, the governor, PDP governor, is 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 because he's doing his job. Jango Agba. There are journalists across the country because they are doing what they're supposed to do. You see, so this whole thing is is, is distilling down to the to the to, uh, to the to the least level because it seems that we have a government across all board that is emboldened to do things they're not supposed to do. So it is the responsibility of the bar to step up. Right, and the, the the world can only respond if they see us crying for help. Because if there is a global pressure, if there is a pressure from all over the world, the same thing that happened under the Abacha time, because there was a time it was too much for us. The pressure wasn't just in Nigeria per se. The world was was asking what is happening in Nigeria. What is happening? The pressure became too much. Nigeria was cut off from some things because of of Abacha's failure to do the things to do things right. So. We need to get to that point where the people that are supposed to call out say, call this thing out so that the, the, the AG doesn't go to the UK and say things that he's not supposed to say. Because if the pressure is there, when he gets to that place, they will embarrass him. And if there's one thing that all these, these guys hate is embarrassment. So even if they don't want to do their job because they need to do their job, People outside Nigeria will embarrass them and force them to do their job. If you travel to the to New York for the United Nations uh, General Assembly meeting, and you know that you're in a place that 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 that, that, that place was set up to promote uh, democracy, security, and freedom of, for everybody, and you are there to give a speech, right? If we have if we, if we, if we have leaders across board, even on an Africa level, international level, that could call leaders out, say this is unacceptable. You shouldn't be in Nigeria harboring tyranny, and you go to to speak to the world about what it doesn't make sense. Still talking of the role of the judiciary, I, it, it bothers me really yes. that it seems there is going back to the earlier conversation we had about what more can the judiciary do as per compelling um, these government um, officials to respect court orders. It is. It is when it is convenient, the government goes to the court seeking court order to implement its own desires. When it was to get um, leave to hold Shawari, the court issued and they complied. Now the same court has issued another order, let this man go, and they are holding on to him. What more? can the judiciary, I believe there is more that the judiciary can do. It's almost like they hold a strong uh, power that they are not effectively utilizing in this country. Well, the judiciary, um, someone described it as, um, uh, as a toothless bulldog, not because it cannot bite. It has a lot of powers, but then it does not have the machinery to move, to move those powers in motion beyond pronouncing, interpreting the laws, as it were, you understand. All over the all over the world, that's how it is. You don't see the judges move their chambers, lead a protest. Typically, or by their calling, they are very reserved individuals who shouldn't be seen so much outside or heard in their personal opinion on, on national issues beyond the legalities of it. I think I've overstretched you on that <laughs> issue, so, so I'm just so going to let it lie. So my Lord should be allowed to <laughs> retire in the chambers and let the government do what it ought to do. All right, thank yeah. you very much for sharing uh, your thoughts and just hanging on there when I keep pressing <laughs> for no answer problem. to that. And thank no you no too for thank being God. on the program. You're not going anywhere yet. I'll okay. just go on a short break. Uh, thank you for, uh, for staying with us so far. We'll go on a short break. And when we return, we'll be talking about Nigeria's government and of course, the PNID saga. Do stay with us.